Hi guys, I'm Sophia. I make cool stuff for the film industry and here on YouTube I show you how you can do the same. Today I'll show you how I made this. But not everything went to plan. I'll tell you what I mean, but first, let's get sculpting. I have this idea of making a jelly fly, a jellyfish butterfly hybrid, and I'm going to start by sketching out what's in my head. I won't follow this to the T when I start sculpting, but it gives me a really good starting point. Next, I'm quickly bashing together a base of tin foil for the body. And for the wings, I'm going to use armature wire for support as the sculpt will be pretty thin in some places. Now, I'm ready to start adding clay. And for this project, I'll be using Super Sculpey, which I'm kneading a little bit before rolling it out. I'm adding a small tinfoil support structure to the bottom wings as the clay is only 2mm thick and would likely collapse without something holding it in place. Once I'm happy with my rough shape, I'm using a bit of isopropyl alcohol to smooth the surface. Time for the body of the jellyfly. I have this idea that I want it to be hollow, so I'm only covering the top surface for now so that I'm able to remove the tinfoil later on. For the upper wings, I'm using my extruder tool to create clay sausages, which I'm using to cover the armature wire. At this point, the design is feeling a bit flat, so I'm adding some overlapping parts to give it a slightly Elvis vibe. Now, with all the main parts blocked out, it's time for our first bake, but my brilliant plan of a thin hollow body didn't work out. It was simply too thin and too underbaked. Nothing to do but to start over, rebuilding the tinfoil structure and this time covering it in a thicker clay wrapping. I'm still determined to make it hollow, but this time I'm not going to bake it until later on. I'm using a fine rake tool to gradually smooth out the surface. Though I'm technically adding tool marks with every stroke, I'm evening out all the underlying lumps and bumps by gradually changing the direction of my tool. It's time to line up the upper wings, but I'm not going to join the parts just yet as the wings are so thin they'll need to bake a lot less than the rest of the body and as the wings have already been pre-baked I can't risk over baking them. So at this point I'm still able to separate it all, finish the details on the body before baking it and then marry it all up afterwards. I want to make this bottom edge appear really thin and wavy with a ragged edge like up here so that it feels more organic. So with a beveled edge, I'm going to create the illusion that it's thin while actually keeping it quite thick underneath so the final product is still strong. Much better. I'm at a point now where I want to pre-bake the body so I'm going to carefully remove the wings by sliding a wire through the joints. But before I bake it, I last minute decide it needs a bit more texture, which I'm creating by making a slurry of Super Sculpey and isopropyl alcohol and flicking it off my chip brush to create a slightly raised speckle pattern. 
And whilst this part goes off to the oven, I'm going to start sculpting the tentacles of the jellyfly. Back from the oven, I'm once again lining everything up so I can place all these new dangly bits. I want the tentacles to look pretty free flowing, but to create a strong final piece, I'm going to discreetly join them in a few places. So for instance here, instead of these two sitting a couple of mils apart, I'll join them up which you'll barely be able to tell, but it will create a much stronger finish. After some more details, I'm again using a bit of ISO to knock back my tool marks and smooth the surface. The tentacles have deserved a pre-bake as well, and then I can finally assemble all the pieces. I'm intertwining the exposed armature wire to create a mechanical bond, and then brushing on some bacon bond before adding fresh clay joining all the parts together and getting carried away in the detail work. As I'm about to bake the final piece, I realize I nearly forgot the antennas. So I drill two small holes where I can fit some thin garden wire and twist it so the clay has something to grab onto. Then I embed the wire into my clay sausages and after another blob of bacon bond, I can work the antennas into the rest of the sculpt. I'm supporting the semi-floppy antennas with a bit of tin foil, and then it's finally time for the big bake-off, which happens at 120 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. Freshly out of the oven, it's time to prime this quitter so we can move forward with painting. Other than priming the surface, the primer actually has another important function, as it reveals any imperfections like these tiny cracks, which likely happened after pre-baking the initial pieces, but Nothing we can't fix with a stick, some super glue, baby powder, and a bit of sandpaper. I'm going to mix, uh, if this thing would just please on block, um, a tiny drop of glue with baby powder until it has a toothpaste consistency, and then I'll scoop it into the cracks. It dries almost instantly, and then I can give it a light sand to get rid of any excess glue. Then I'm going to give it another dusting of the primer to check my repair job. I'm primarily airbrushing this piece, and as I've been sculpting, I couldn't help being reminded of the floating plant creatures from Avatar, so I've decided to go with a purple bluish color scheme to complement the world of Pandora. I'm alternating the airbrushing with a bit of hand speckling with my cut down chip brush, and as this spattering is a pretty sloppy business, I'm making sure the sculpture is fully dry before getting back on the airbrush. I'm using a folded piece of masking tape to shelter part of the parts of the wings by shading in other parts with a deep blue to create a bit more contrast. Then it's time to seal what we have so far with a matte varnish before adding my washes and this time with alcohol based inks. I'm hitting my high point details with a bit of white dry brushing. And finally, after sandwiching in the sculpture under another layer of matte varnish, I'm sporadically adding a bit of clear gloss to give the piece a slightly wet look. And now, remember how I was so set on making the body hollow? I had this idea of putting a light inside to make it glow from the inside out. Only problem 
is that the version 2 shell is too thick to really see much of the light. So, I decide to pivot and turn the fairy lights into tentacles instead, instantly upgrading this sculpture to a mixed media artwork. I'm slightly sanding the surface of the wire to knock back the shine and to give it a bit of bite for me to paint on top of. And there we go, a glowing avatarish jellyfly, finally ready for its beauty shots. If you like this video, I would love it if you'd let me know either by liking or subscribing. And remember, the comments are there for you to ask questions, so don't be shy. See you next time.